So our job was to create something that didn't distract, mm. which obviously that did. Yeah, yeah. Badly. Which, yeah, it did actually. <laughs> right, we'll throw that one away. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have football design royalty, Fionn Appleton-Jones sitting next to me. Total 90 as a concept back in 2004, still regarded to this day as one of the greatest all-round concepts within football kit and football marketing history. So Fionn worked with Craig at Nike during that era when I was sitting across in Germany, looking across enviously yeah. at what you guys were producing. So Fionn, thanks very much for coming to join yeah, us thank today. You. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Yeah, it is, it's great. I mean, we've been looking forward to this for ages, but it's interesting because what a lot of people probably won't understand is how we got to this world. And it actually started from the World Cup. So yeah. the reason why I've got the Cool Motion Korean kit in this case here is because that was the birth child of how we approached Total 90. One of the things we don't talk a lot about is the concept of 360s. And what we did have at the World Cup in 2002, if you remember, Ronaldo scored those infamous goals. Most people will remember his haircut, not his chrome boots that he had yeah, at the time. It wasn't a great look, that, was it? No, it wasn't the best, but he played with a chrome football boot, if you remember. Yeah. And there was also a chrome ball that went with it. And the big miss was there was no apparel that sat next to it. Yeah. So it wasn't what we would call a 360 concept as we would now call them. So that also entered into the brief for Total 90. And that arguably was really challenging internally. But the things that kind of remained was we were adamant that we had an interest in fabric. So we kept with that mesh details obviously, but we kept the shard in there. But for the first time, basically we wanted to bond the seams Bonding now, you can do bonding all over the place, right? You can get a garment, you can go around seams, around arms and everything. But at that time, it wasn't that far in advance. So if you get the Total 90 templates, they were actually designed in a way that they would fit on these flatbed machines. So when they were pressed, yeah, yeah. the bonding worked and it was a totally different process back in those days. So that was the starting points, if you like. And I think also we talked about zero distraction a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. So where we had this, yeah. which was a distraction and it was something we didn't want to do again. So when we came to design all of these kits, it was right. it's all about zero distraction and think about the player, that, yeah. you know, it's all about comfort. Yeah. And he, he's focusing 90 minutes on his game. So our job was to create something that didn't distract, mm. which obviously that did. Yeah. Yeah. Badly. Which, yeah, it did actually. <laughs> right, we'll throw that one away. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's why we decided to do bonding because, of course, you don't have the chafing and the stitching, yeah. so it's, you don't feel the seams. So I spent at least a week experimenting yeah. with bonding and then coming back to Nike with all these different bonded shapes. Mm. And have you taken a lot of athlete insight at the time? I know that it's a Nike thing is to get insight from the athletes and you're a big football fan. Did you yeah. get out talking to players? Yeah, we go to Carrington, we go and with these kids the biggest insight was the peripheral vision. You know, yeah. Alex Ferguson was a big fan of that. Yeah. So we made sure that we had different cues, which is the shard here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can see your teammates. So we had like points on the jerseys where we had peripheral vision. Yeah, and I think one of the things that was really distinctive about it was the shapes that we created. Fionn's done a great aesthetic with what looks like a shield to some extent, and then we've changed it as we've gone through mm -hmm. some of the other designs, because obviously when you come into something like Croatia, you know, to then put the shield in it, you're then creating really such a small space so we've adopted them yeah, slightly. Yeah. Everybody will remember the 9-0 from the Total 90 boot. And as we talked about earlier, this 360 concept that we're trying to get in, we tried to take the 9-0 and incorporate that into the football kits. So I remember we were having an internal discussion of, well, how do we put it on? Where do we put it? And when we'd originally designed the kits, there was actually a circle on the back and then the rest was mesh. And that was how we were going to tie it in. So then if you imagine all the numbers that yeah. would have gone on the back, it would have had the representation to that. But there was so much fighting internally that we didn't want to do because we didn't want to compromise the product and all that sort of stuff. I think from memory, didn't the, the centre front numbers work? Yes. Yeah, they stayed. Encapsulated yeah. in a circle. They had the numbers within the circle. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. moved on to the Ole as well. So if yeah. you remember the ad campaign, it was like a scribbled Ole, um, yeah. and that was the whole marketing campaign. Yeah. But where did the 90 come from? 
because it was such an iconic visual and at the time I can't recall any other brand or any other collection had had such an impactful visual identity across everything yeah so where did that come from i mean it looks like a speed limit on a motorway Isn't yeah as simple as that well no it was i can't take any credit for it it was basically a guy called peter hudson mm -hmm. who was the footwear designer at the time i was overseeing the clothing side of things and then there was another guy called clancy boyer who was overseeing all the accessories and then we said right okay world cup's done what are we going to do for the euros and peter had been working around this idea of the 90. And I think what his original idea was to do was, say for example, he was given the boot to Beckham or he was given the boot to Ronaldo or whoever it was at the time, their number would go in the circle. Mm -hmm. But then we thought we needed something a bit more generic. So then the nine zero came about and yeah. that's the 90 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. And then we basically all got on board with it and we said, right, we'll go back to our divisions and try and convince them to buy into this 360 concept. And that's when yeah. all the fireworks started. <laughs> Amazing. And for you, Fionn, how early were you presented with the 90s, kind of the idea? And did that play a role in how you were designing it or was it entirely insight, zero distractions focused? Do you know, it must have been a mashup of all of that, that you've just said, actually. But then the 90 then evolved into the training kit. So mm, we did the training kit for Manchester yeah. United. And actually that was based around Rooney, you know, fiery and all the kids loved it. So whatever we did with the total 90, the kids bought. Yeah, because yeah. it did seem to be ubiquitous all yeah. around. It was the uniform the kids yeah. wanted to wear. Yeah, yeah all yeah. around Europe. Yeah. At the time it was working for a competitor brand and, and we were tasked with trying to develop some sneakers that you'd wear indoors because everybody yeah. was wearing the total 90 kicks. And it was like, well, no, they're not wearing it because they're indoor football trainers they're wearing it because it's got 90 on yeah. the side of it and yeah. everybody yeah. wants when, a piece where, of it yeah exactly yeah i mean the training gear every season it just got bigger and yeah. bigger yeah. and bigger and it was just nice to see because of the heartache we'd been through yeah. by trying to get them to do it in the first place yeah. So yeah craig did all that hard work i just had to design yeah well it's probably good because you probably wouldn't have ended <laughs> up designing such thing. lovely things that tends to be the way that and we you, operate together i send yeah. him out to fight yeah. the battles and i just get on with yeah. it yeah. heaven knows why <laughs> and, you know, because we had to design for these elite athletes who are driving around in these amazing cars and designer clothes. So we had to make the fabrics better, yeah. make the designs better. So they actually feel like they want to wear this gear yeah. all day, every day to train it. And so you're kind of pushing football to a different I think that designs. was also nice, what you brought to the table at that time. Because it wasn't just a real sportswear background, you also had a real fashion background. So the, it was no surprise that it was being worn on the streets. Yeah. Because it did have that little bit of lifestyle element yeah, to it. Totally. it was, like, was it quite a rigorous testing program? Some of you at home will know Nike have got incredible testing facilities. Was a lot done through there? Was a lot of it done in the field? Oh yes, definitely. People? It was done in the field. Yeah. 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 Of course, the fabrics are tested, and then it's tested. The players test them. Yeah. We did also quite a bit of work with wind tunnels and you got players running. We did a lot of stuff with Figo and Sao Pinto at the time for mm -hmm. Portugal. Yeah. They were quite influential in some of the stuff. So yeah, you absolutely had to get it yeah. on the players. But it's interesting because obviously what we've got in front of was all the replica stuff. And as we talked about the bonding side of things, and again, that was a decision right at the last minute because we're so nervous about going into a big event and not having the same issues that we had with the World Cup. Yeah. We actually stitched every one of those bonding seams, which... Yeah, I, I remember them. buying at the time, I, I bought the Portugal authentic version. They were limited edition, but like limited to one of 5,000 or yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> And getting one, because I'd heard, oh, it's the first fully bonded football yeah. shirt. And it arrived, and it kind of was, but it had got stitches all the way through it. Yeah, but and I can understand people were nervous around it, because the last thing Nike wants is kids, yeah, yeah. kids coming to pieces on, on the field. But yeah, physio running on the pitch with yeah. a sewing machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, looking back, I think we should have had the balls to do it. We should have stuck by our guns, because it absolutely... Because it had worked. been tested. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. The factory tested it, yeah. of course... Crazy. Was, yeah. How did it feel though? Can you remember what it was like when you found out it was getting stitched through and then a few months later when you saw how um, I think amazing it's, it, it was? I think it was still the best shit. Yeah, to produce 
football shirts that were so advanced at the time. It was a fantastic yeah. feeling, yeah. Mm. This just, it seems to be the kit that never stops giving because... Well, I think like... they still stand up now. Yeah, we designed to look like modern shirts, so we didn't look at the retro shirts. Yeah, because there was definitely a split at that time where a couple of brands were going full steam ahead into the future. A few brands weren't at all. Yeah. And Nike at that time were racing ahead of everybody visually and in terms of the technicality and function of the product. Yeah. yeah. I think the kits that you did before I I started, kicked it off to be honest. I think what was really nice at that time at Nike, genuinely, I mean, it was an amazing time to work there. Yeah. yeah. Because Nike, by all accounts, had not really found their feet in the sport at that mm. point. You know, they kind of had, they'd won their first World Cup in the Brazil kit and whatnot. But that's why I think this era was so important, it was because there was a lot of football culture in what we were doing so we were really thinking about the fans at that point so we had a proper lifestyle range which was cotton and yeah. Yeah. joggers and sweatshirts and all that sort of stuff that whole lifestyle thing was really being pushed that whole cultural side of football yeah. and nike wanted to absolutely dominate that sport so they just went about getting all the best players in the world that was massive but you for the talk brand. about the lifestyle element i think it was beckham he wasn't a nike athlete but he cut his trousers, didn't he, to three quarters yeah, with yeah, him. And yeah, then we started right. making yeah, three yeah. quarters trousers. Yeah. And of course, everybody everyone's got wearing three quarter trousers. Yeah, that's right. I remember we, we dived on that train pretty yeah. hard as well because yeah. it was like even Burnley players are cutting their trousers. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like that that yeah. was the quote well, it was in the office. Well, it was just him and it was like, well, let's do that then. Let's yeah. just do it no, for him it so he doesn't have to cut. Well, I yeah. think, you know, the, the line plan for the viewers, the line plan is the list of products you've got to design for a particular collection for so many years, just wrote itself of yeah. exactly what it was. So, and then around this era, all of a sudden, it was like, oh, well, Cameroon have had a sleeveless shirt, yeah. so everybody wants a sleeveless top in training. Yeah. You know, and three quarter pants or seven eighths pants and super tight pants. Yes. And, yeah. You yeah. Know, the totally. gloves were off completely. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, like, yeah, knock yourself yeah. out. Yeah, bringing things like Gore-Tex <laughs> in. Yes. Yeah. You know, we started and you, yeah, using Gore-Tex. jackets on you the sideline yeah. and even designing for the manager. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. and I think that's what is so wonderful about being able to talk through some of this stuff mm. because Theon has been an absolute pioneer in actually shaping football. Yes, you know the way that we approach that whole industry. So if you are excited to get into design and all the rest of it, it is such a wonderful industry to yeah, work in. Totally. I think the other thing I would say, you don't actually quite take it in at the time no, either, you do you? At the time you're just you convinced of what you've got to do and no. then you look back and you think, holy shit, why did I do yeah, that? Yeah, just at the time you have deadlines. Yeah, yeah and, and, totally. But I remember drawing this, I remember sketching it. Do you think that was the moment of the birth of modern football and that's how it's going to stay? Or do you think there will be another seismic shift at some point as dramatically as we saw at the beginning of the 2000s? Well, you know, Nike raised the benchmark so high and they're still doing it. Yeah. You know, they're like pieces of art. I think these football yeah. kits are just beautiful, you know, and I'm not sure what, what there is out there. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Beyond, thanks so much for coming in. It's been great to take this awesome. trip down memory lane. Definitely. It's amazing. Thank you so to much. Spend it's been some time great with you. fun. Really thankful also to Subside Sports who've provided us with kind of the ammunition for this conversation. Yeah. If you've enjoyed the video, we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. And if you want to see more of this type of content in the future, remember to subscribe. Big thanks again to Fion, the superstar, the queen of Nike. Thanks so much. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Brilliant. Hit the like button. Um, if like us, you're forgetting what you were supposed to be saying in re-recording it, by all means, leave a comment. <laughs>